Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi there. Welcome to our coffee break. Wow, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling I'm feeling stuffed. <laughs> So we're, we're day after, after <laughs> Turkey Day. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, so it's Black Friday. That's right. So it's um, biggest shopping day of the year, mm -hmm. and going into a lot of giving season. Right. And actually, everything festive. That's right. Yeah, that's the spark with it. Sparkle. Oh, I'm starting already. Uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I always <laughs> like. I wait, and and it's funny. I think there were two things that went on. Uh, one as a child. The tree went in the house, but the tree didn't get decorated until Christmas Eve by Santa. Oh, oh. So, so that put a lot of pressure on the parents. I guess so. <laughs> to do everything. But, but that's, that's the way it went. And then when I had my second born, his birthday is December 4th. Coming oh. Up. Happy birthday, Emerson. Um, but... So we wouldn't put anything up until after right. his birthday so we could go from Thanksgiving to celebrate his birthday and then doing Christmas. So I still sort of wait. Yeah. I wait. Yeah. To I the, grieve. Today is like also where all the scout wreaths get delivered. Yeah. So I, I, oh. I immediately start decorating. Yeah. The, I mean, That's actually, the first thing. I have stuff already I bring down right before Thanksgiving and they're in boxes ready to start going up oh, yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, um, it's, it's all. In the and every, everybody's celebrating holidays. I mean, all different religions and so um, forth. And December is quite yeah, a, December, a, a I mean, a lot of times this weekend, yeah. I'm writing Christmas cards already. Right. Oh, oh I like hate that. you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've already pulled the trigger. This and year might them. be the year I actually do send them again. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Oh my God. <laughs> I used to uh, even write one of those letters, like the things uh, that happened oh, during the year. Oh, we used to do that. Oh, my gosh. And, um, I used I've, to try to write notes to everybody, and, you know, that's my downfall. Well, you know, that's kind of an interesting segue to um, us as women and just, you know, as we get into the, the holidays sort of shines a spotlight. We love doing all these things, and we do. I mean, you know, men do too, but it's also, you know, the, I don't know, I'd like to take this breather just thinking about, um, it's responsibility to kind of keep the party going. You know, you're kind of the home and hearth kind of focus, making sure that, you know, traditions, your family traditions are kept, you know, delegating who does what. Sure, <laughs> sure. Know? Yep. Um, well, you know. And those change over time when little kids to uh, big kids to adult kids to no kids. Well, and, and, a, and it kind of extends not only beyond, I mean, it extends beyond the holidays with the, um, who's in charge of what as if you have a partner or not mm -hmm. the delegation of tasks and duties and, and you know I like to say it's kind of nice when you have one lead and the other's comfortable following then the other leads and, yeah. and you, do, you can get back and, and follow but that a lot of times the like holidays. I, I do the shopping. He does all the wrapping. I was wrapping. just going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I absolutely don't. I hate wrapping. He oh. does. He, and mm -hmm. he loves it. He has a ruler out, everything. He And he, he does most of the wrapping. It depends. Last year I did a lot of it because the kids get sacks. And I just, I wrap, I throw it in the sack, wrap, and mm -hmm. throw it in the sack. So we just have to drag it down. Yeah. But, um, but you're, yeah, Michael cooks. He's the, he's the main chef at uh, your house, Christmas right? Eve, he cooks. Christmas Day, I cook. Okay. okay. Yeah. But the, um, you know, I mean, tonight, I mean, I'm kicking off the Holy Spirit just going to, HCA for David Jeremiah's concert. Oh, and, oh. You know, it, it's a combination mm -hmm. of holiday music. His brothers will come in and sing too, and his sister I think will sing. Uh, but it, it's also you know some of the stuff that he's done professionally and out mm -hmm. there and contemporary mm -hmm. stuff. But the um, that'll be really exciting. Absolutely. Oh, you know, it's really but it's exciting. also like you know you go from Thanksgiving to the the Christmas holidays, and the stuff in between kind of like is just mush. <laughs> well, it's like outside of, outside of going to like you know. Oh, you have another party. You have to like plug through your day and do work and everything else. It's like, yeah. it's like a lead up <laughs> to then. Well, I don't know the dates offhand. I apologize. Hanukkah's in there. Um, There's some other um, holidays sort of in this December time frame. We'll probably talk about them and next time we get together. But, yeah, um, I guess we yeah. get closer. I think last year Hanukkah it. and Christmas holiday felt exactly the same. Like if not, and I think this year it starts like a day before. Our, Christmas. It's just a, a, a time when, you know, homes are lit up, Diwali, you know, in terms of time frame, or maybe past. Yeah. That's where I'm going to yeah. tonight, is a oh, Diwali. Oh, oh like you're going to go. I know. Oh, so 
Actually, no, it's tomorrow night. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's tomorrow night. Yeah. Like, yeah. But the timing is just so they, you know, put it, keeping that all together. Well, and I, of course, um, you know, I, 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 this is also professionally a really busy time of year for me. Yes. Because a lot of my clients Finance. are trying to get everything together <laughs> mm -hmm. for year end. And so I always look at this time of year and I'm like, Okay. I know. Ooh, Take you're a deep in. breath. Yeah. Yeah. Focus. Exactly. <laughs> Plan. Be very specific. Well, mine's a calm before the storm. I, I always, you know, things build up and then hit it hard first of the year in terms yeah. of projects. So I always find myself going to, you know, far, you know, driving far, like Cape or South Coast or wherever. You know, in the dead of winter. I mean, that's really where, yeah. Professionally, R right? Or, like, or yeah. is it your way to? I don't. I'm missing. Oh no, no, no. Professionally. So okay. we just, just picked up a client. From yeah, South um, UMass Dartmouth. I'll be doing some work with, and yeah. so I'll be heading down that way in the dead and of winter. <laughs> you just started. Yes. I took over as the membership director and community outreach director for at least a very long-term contract. Um, probably, it could be permanent or it could be at least yeah. a year for WICN Radio. It's an NPR affiliate in Worcester. Mm. It's a jazz station. Um, but they'll, um, they're going to launch into their 50th anniversary in 2018, so there'll be a wow. whole lot going on oh my for that. Goodness. Um, Congrats to that. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. And is your end busy? You, I mean, you probably don't know yet, but it's sort of a big... Well, there's, drives, drives, yeah, there's a poor fourth quarter giving and fun drive, things like yeah, that. So, so we're busy. And I mean, as much as you could choose the station I work with, we have a ton of local charities, so when you're shopping during the season, especially now, you're going to be on Amazon anyhow. Use Amazon Smile and pick a charity of your choice because yeah, they get five yeah. percent of it. That's it doesn't make yes. any difference on how you shop, how you get delivered, how Amazon Prime, but the charity gets something out right. of it. Right. So I mean, like, I mean, we were opening the mail yesterday, and we, you know, every couple months you get a check, and they're little itty bitty things, but it right. was forty nine dollars and change that went to the charity that That's they wouldn't right. have gotten. Right. But just because someone bought like their laundry soap and cat, they would have been buying anyway. Every so that's awesome. A little bit helps, and I feel over the years. Uh, charities continue to do more and more for our society and receive less and less. <laughs> right. Um, you know, I'm going to do a shameless plug. We have coming up uh, something you started, Shopping for a Cause. Mm. This year, the benefactor is going to be primarily the HCA, which yes. is a local, wonderful gem. Mm -hmm. You're supporting local businesses and vendors. And our event crafts. will be at the HCA. Yeah, and yep. the event will be at the HCA. There will be... Um, well, it's always so fun. It's festive, it's just, kicks off shopping. Well, where else can you go shopping for you know, a variety of vendors? And this year, um, juried artisans that have been part of HCA's um, shopping bazaar at the holiday time, but also have complimentary wine sips and, sips and other new food. food. Startline yeah. Brewery. Startline Brewery. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of stuff. Like, but um, I think like with you know, the benefactor this year with the being the Hopkins Center for the Arts and they're focused on becoming a very much a regional arts center. Yes. And the draw they're having outside the community is, you know, when we've done, we're always fundraising in this community. Mm -hmm. But when you look at something where it's the schools or the library, they get state and federal grants too. Yes. The HCA is one of the only organizations that is totally dependent on private donations right. and mm -hmm. private grants. Mm -hmm. Great, great mm -hmm. exclamation point. Which is wonderful actually. And, and you know, working with the, the public sector and you know, many of my clients are nonprofits. You know, I admire those that are able to be sustainable on private donations. It gives them more flexibility and freedom around how they can, you know, apply their, their revenues. I mean, within, obviously, the It gives construct, flexibility. It does create a level of insecurity. It is always be fundraising. Right. It's a right. really hard. Right. I mean, I, I see it just sitting on um, right. a couple of boards I'm on. Um, but you're know. always politically on edge when you, if you are oh. too heavily financed by state or federal funding. Yeah. You know, and I've seen that more often where I mean, organizations are like, yikes, so-and-so's got it, elected, you know, what does this and mean? And in Massachusetts, right. one of the big ways you, you'll see it is like uh, Mass Board of Tourism got 90% of their funding cut. So that yeah. means the Metro West Board of Tourism went down, they lost 70% of their right. funding. Yeah. Right. And yeah. they, they actually went from is the three employees yeah. to mm -hmm. three quarters of an employee. Yeah. Right. So you have to support the organizations you care about. And yep. private, private fundraising is, and with is a lifeline. And with Amazon Smile, I, you know, it, um, I just rotate it. Like whenever I'm buying something, I just pick a different mm -hmm. charity. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so sometimes they might be getting three bucks, sometimes they might be getting 40 bucks, depending on what you're buying. Right. And, stuff like. yeah. and there are some things you buy and that they don't apply to Amazon Smile, but most does. Yeah. And most of the time it's, you know, dog food or whatever, but. 
Well, it, it, it's interesting. Um, I I try try not to shop Amazon. I try to shop local. Mm -hmm. I try to do, and and I'm not always good at that. But I will tell you, Amazon as an organization, talk about, and I use this word. It's a business term, disruptive. Oh, wow! Well, yeah. And in, in in a way, disruptive <laughs> in how, what it is causing other businesses to do in a good way. Yeah. Um, and how it impacts businesses, because you have to. Um, you sell different. You market different when you're exactly. online and of that size. Um, and I think shopping for the cause has a huge focus on, right. you know, small local business, a lot of the women's right. cottage businesses. And I know last week's show we talked a lot about, you know, Small Business Saturday. Right. And that, you know, there are so many small businesses here, whether you go to Swoon or you go to Ooh. Stephanie G or Hoppy exactly. and Jewelers and things like that where you can get... I mean, I, gift cards, even gift cards to things like bittersweet and things like that. Oh, but in that case works. anybody wonders, I mean, this is not rinky-dink stuff. I mean, the, the vendors and oh. the artisans, it's beautiful. It's like kind of, I, I, I'm liking it to kind of poly arts plus other kinds of vendors that, that aren't, it's, you know, It's artisans. pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's very, so pretty cool stuff. very, very cool it's stuff. Sunday, December 10th from 4 to like 7.30 mm -hmm. at the HCA. We have the whole facility. Yeah. And um, you can find it on Eventbrite or you can show up that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, net proceeds um, go and, and, you know, really the costs are food, beverage, and well, yeah. detail, and everything else, uh, tables, any, uh, and... Anything yeah. it is. We, yeah, uh, <laughs> whatever it costs to put this stuff on. The HCA is getting the rest. Go to the HCA, which is great. So, the, anyway, yeah. what else so you got going gosh, on? Just, um, I don't know, just busy, excited. Um, Excited about my, you know my projects. I um, a, a couple weeks ago I posted a video. Um, if those of you who don't know, Tracy Ellis Ross, Diana Ross's daughter, and um, she's a, a TV actress, comedian. comedian. Oh, she's she's amazing. a sitcom star on a on a TV show, Blackish. She she's a mom. Yeah, she's a mom. She's yeah, well, no, she's not a mom. That's no, what, oh. she's the mom she's on Blackish. The, yes, she's not indeed. a mom. She's the mom on Blackish. But the reason why I posted the video, I, she's becoming a bit of a not unintentional kind of life coach for women in their 30s and 40s. I, I'm not in that age group, of course, but, you know, I find it, I resonated with it. I don't think but, any of us are. <laughs> Darn. But, you know, it, it's well, still, I'm not. <laughs> her message was for, for everybody, but it was essentially um, really getting clear about what you want to be and who, besides being mother, wife, you know, family provider, family nurturer, if you, if you and, and those are key and important things. Lord knows they've been a key and important to all of our lives. But who else are you on your own, on your own as an individual person, which almost sounds selfish to think about. But I mean, because I'm so much of identified with my kids, my husband and my work, you know, but if, that, if you took that away, who, who, are who am I? So yeah. you said something that I think is very interesting. You said, almost sounds selfish. Yeah. And not, I always say this, not at the exclusion of men, but I will tell you, when you have that conversation with a man, he will not, and I'm stereotyping, I know some of you guys out there may feel differently, but as a stereotype, as a percentage, they would never feel that was being selfish. Right, it's just being and who so they are. So the societal values that have been placed on us have us questioning, oh, I shouldn't feel that way because that's being too self-centered or selfish. Right. Yet if you can't be you, how can you be a whole person to everybody else? Right. And we've, you know, those of us who've been married for, for decades, you know, and, and it's you know, <laughs> all good, but... Um, so her, her point in her video was, you know, Tracy Ellis Ross is a 45-year-old professional doing well, really well professionally with friends and socially, but she's not married. She doesn't have children. So wherever she goes, it's almost an apology she feels. And, and I don't know. Um, oh, you'll find a man. Yeah, you, oh, or, you don't need to be married right. to have children. Oh, right. You, well, you can adopt, adopt a baby. You know, and all these things. That, <laughs> so that, suggesting that you're not complete until you become a mother and or a partner or in some combination she, you know marriage to carriage i mean you must but have I think those we pieces. do that ourselves to people too oh yeah, we do. I, I was at a networking event um a week or so ago mm -hmm. and met someone for the first time and she was telling me where she lived i was not where i live we were talking about different things and i said oh um 
what age are your kids? And she goes, oh, I don't have kids. I have a dog. Uh -huh. And she goes, and my husband does this, whatever. And I was like, right away, I assumed she'd have kids and, right. and stuff like that. We so all it's do a it. general assumption. Because do we do that when we meet a man for the first time? So I mean, well, maybe we do. Well, Here, I do, yeah, we do because we're family. <laughs> it's such a family-oriented well, place. But. but I will tell you, you, so usually when you meet a couple, mm -hmm. you'll turn to the man and you'll say, what, what do, do you do? do? Right. And then do you do that? Or do you ask how many children to the woman? And I have to admit, I also am very guilty of, I have adult children. I constantly am saying, oh, my oldest has a girlfriend. The other two, not yet. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why like, is as if that, that's the, that's the that's goal. That's what they have to do. And I'm like, right. she want me. I do that too. That's, that yeah. clip really right. made me think about that. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to admit, selfishly, I do want grandchildren. And I don't know if you can adopt grandchildren. <laughs> I think you can, <laughs> informally. But yeah, and it's not a criticism. It's really just, it was just an aha moment for me, you know, no. to coin Oprah's phrase, just thinking, oh, wow, I didn't realize re how much my identity. And I'm wondering what vibe I'm giving off to, you know, other women and my, my own kids. You know, I'm always saying, oh, I'm so happy they're in relationships, but they're not married, but that's coming, or whatever, something yeah, to that effect. I, you make that, that excuse. Yeah, it's just... Um, what if, and I guess um, Tracy Ross's point was, what if we weren't thinking about that so much and just, you know, um, celebrated? Celebrate, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you into? What do you like? And we do that to a great extent, but there's always that other piece. Um, that's so that's interesting. So, I, you know, I went to a new eye doctor um, at um, Mass College of Pharmacy in Worcester mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, and so the combination is. I went there because I took my insurance, but the combination is that um, they have students and they have um, yeah. a doctor come it's in. A teacher. Yeah. So I had a sophomore and a senior who gave me probably the most thorough, but they did the questions different. Like usually they'll say like, "Oh, where are you from? How, you right. know, how are your kids?" They can see if you have a wedding ring on. Right, they right, can, right. They know sure. if you're married, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But the um, the girl was asked questions. So what are your hobbies? Oh, and stuff yeah. like that, and I was like, "Make you think," like, and, you know. It was like, "You think," and she goes, "Oh, so what do you, you know? What's your favorite music? What's your favorite TV show?" And I was like, "Wow, I've never." It's, it's always all been about like, you. It was. Just, uh, yeah, it's usually question. been kind of like, "What's the, you know, you're, you're, you're you married, unit. your kids, right. yeah, things like that." And it was, and so this girl is probably 21 years old mm -hmm. that was doing this at the time, and yeah. it was a different kind of feel to it. Right. Do, and, do you um, think the next generation? is feeling less encumbered or more, you know? I wonder. I wonder. Um, I, mean, I think they're feeling a little bit more empowered, I too. think about your kids, because yeah. mine are, like, so, you know, a little bit older, but yours coming up out of uh, high school, you're 17, younger. and I have one that will turn 21 on Tuesday, on right. Giving Tuesday, on That's the uh, right. 28th. Oh, nice. And, um, you know, I can see, like, where they've actually gotten engaged some politically. They've gotten engaged in community of things. Right. Um, I chair a committee in town that actually met um, last week and um, our guest was a the president of the Hopkins High School junior class who's gotten really engaged in one of the um, governor campaigns oh, nice. and he came and he spent uh, articulate presented had sign up sheets for email list had all this stuff oh the student did the yeah. student did it oh. was it was very much dynamic yeah. and um, wow so that's, I think it is so impressive. you know and um, you know they're I only think, who they are as individuals I think between first. 16 and 21 they are kind of whoa what do I do now yeah yeah um, everything from like the college apps to um, like personal interviews is all about what you do in your community what are you doing to give back you know and their questions are less you know, what did you get on your SAT and, you know, what was your AP exam score? Then, mm -hmm. you know, who you are. Who that's you are. great. I well, hope that's, a, that's and, a good trend. And I do see my daughter who's now post-college um, seeking her own identity mm -hmm. and not necessarily seeking the values that were, quote, unquote, the values when I graduated from mm -hmm. college. Um, and, and I, I'm encouraged by that because, to me, as she and my other children, my two boys, um, you know, are now young adults, uh, what do you really want for your children? Right. Happy, fulfilled, mm -hmm. successful in their own right, you know, exactly. uh, you mean success as relatives. Oh, yes, Yeah, indeed. decent human beings. And I'm like, 
Well, okay. But I'm looking for the, you know, in terms of their, my, my kids' partners. I still partners. have grandchildren, but I may have to adopt. <laughs> you got yeah. a dog. Yeah. I do. I have three dogs. I have two grand puppies of my own. <laughs> but, you know, I, I look for partners with my kids that are supportive of who they are mm -hmm. and that they both, you know, can complement each other, you know. But, um, it would, and what's interesting, you know, my son's girlfriend, my daughter's boyfriend, they really are. They're just like great individuals together. You know, mm -hmm. just really um, encouraging each other's interests. I mean, you know, case in point, real quick, um, I made a comment about Kira's appearance. And, oh, doesn't she look beautiful? Or shouldn't, I made some reference to something. And his response was just so supportive, but he was like, yeah, Kira's awesome. She's beautiful. She can do whatever she wants. I mean, he, just, he doesn't yeah. get into it in terms of what he thinks about it. She knows, you know. Yeah. It's just like, wow, you're such a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those kinds of things. It's just interesting. Um, I hadn't really thought about, you know, and, and as an empty nester, it's becoming a little, you know, as I think about, oh, well, now what? You yeah. know? Um, well, I think the now what conversation um, is happening uh, at a lot of levels because it, it seems traditional, particularly for women, when you become an empty nester, to reconsider, well, now what? Mm -hmm. And so, um, in my profession and in my business in particular, we actually hire a lot of women mm -hmm. who either have young children mm -hmm. and are deciding they want to rejoin the workforce, very bright, very talented. Mm -hmm. And you know, my business partner and I we went to a leadership conference um, a couple of weeks ago and it went through some, some exercises that we need to bring this back to our team. But the point being is talented women who want some flexibility, but also want a career path. And we unknowingly started to create this career path that we're essentially training bright and talented women how to become controllers. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I expected that from the empty nesters to want to rejoin, but now I'm seeing it with the women who want to work maybe but 20 hours a demanding? week. I mean, what, in your in your firm, they can so get the flexibility. They yeah. can work the hours they want to work. But you I'm mean saying, financial controllers or controllers oh. personally? No, oh. no, no. <laughs> I, I, I mean, controller is a, is a job title. title. Yeah. Job title. <laughs> job. No, thank you for clarifying. Clarifying. Want to be that controllers? Like, all right. Uh oh, they <laughs> just sound scary. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> but, but you know, starting as a, a, a staff yeah. bookkeeper and moving up. But the point being is. There is more of that going on in more facets of life where I think, and women and men are starting to look and take stock in their lives Absolutely. and what's important. I think the millennials start out of the blocks not going for the, oh, I have to be. I want the 80-hour-a-week gig at this particular yeah. place. Well, they don't want the 80-hour-a-week gig. Right. They, want, they right. want quality of life, and that's right. actually been exactly. a big part of the platform that millennials for the last, like, Absolutely. five, ten years I've looked at is that mm -hmm. it, it's a balance of quality of life and things like that. And I think looking at where my son goes to school versus like where my daughter's looking and things like that, where she's looking is talks more quality of life. Where he goes really talks about this is what you're going to make when you get out this way. And you know, yeah. it's very much, you know, engineering focused, math focused, yes. this is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And very much a harder core discipline. Right. But he'll have obviously lots of choices but the, too. Um, but, with him. but they also... <clears throat> It is a mandated of giving back community. Yep. Well, well you know, to, to the point of, um, you know, work-life balance. So um, there's a groundswell of individuals who want to be consultants who work independently. And uh, a colleague of mine, we're going to be doing some workshops on helping organize or people think about how to to be that consultant, I just use that, or contractor, or to be that independent person. So if they can't find an employer like yours, where the type of business model is such that they have the flexibility of scheduling and so forth, that, you know, they're, they're looking for that. And that's what, that's what corporations and other businesses and other organizations, nonprofits, um, there's a high turnover beginning to see with executive directors and young people getting into nonprofit. They, they love the mission work, but that world of an executive director working 80 plus hours a week, you know, they're finding trouble getting young people to want to get into that type of growth. I was, I was listening to what Darlene was saying and sort of the dichotomy between her children. Um, and I have a similar dichotomy with my oldest one, All, has always been very focused, very driven, very career oriented, and I call them a capitalist. <laughs> but my younger two are absolutely more quality of life and, and lifestyle. 
And, and then I'm seeing it on our end of the spectrum where I think there are a couple of dynamics happening. One, we're realizing retirement at 60 and even 70 economically is not necessarily feasible. That's right. But how do you create a quality of life? And so and you know, it's my goal <laughs> to, to start to segue into being able to do, you know, a couple weeks ago, did a little long weekend um, away, and we packed in four days what filled like two weeks worth of <laughs> travel and play, but then, you know, go back yeah. into the work mode and, and so being able to do those things. Is, a, is going to be a dominant theme. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. What's going on? What should we... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, I, I know. Um, you know, we were talking about shopping for the cause, so I do want to make sure that we mention Trina Mackey's back for the fourth year as the presenting oh. sponsor, the key sponsor of this event. Our fairy godmother. And has, <laughs> has very much, you know, taken this on. Um, she's now with uh, William, William, William Rabus, Rabus really? and um, her office is right on, um, at 85 Main Street. Awesome. Um, and we've got a great group of local businesses that have embraced this organization from under pressure, um, power washing right. to... Uh, oh, my goodness. My God, Hiller's Cleaners called me yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Miracle and, um, Congo. You know, well, yeah, mm -hmm. Miracle mm -hmm. Congo Law Firm. Mm -hmm. We're um, going to do none of them justice. And There's you know, so but, many. <laughs> but it's neat that it's like the Hoppy and Chamber of Commerce, again, for the, is, mm -hmm. is for the fourth year. Absolutely. Embrace this and sees that, you know, the value that bringing these things in the community. And I think um, a lot of what's going on in the community is focused on the HCA the next few weeks between the concert tonight, the Nutcracker coming up, the Troublemakers Holiday concert. So there's a lot going on. New Year's on. Eve. The, uh, and, 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 and again, sparkling um, <laughs> hot pieces. And, and actually, that's a pretty cheap ticket for a night out for New Year's Gosh, Eve. It's 40 bucks a person. Includes appetizers, two drink tickets, a champagne toast, and dancing to hot acoustics. Yep. So we'll have more on all these holiday fun things and information on, on uh, HCAM today and in yeah, been, next, um, coming up. And there's yeah. a link on HCAM for shopping for the cause already. Yeah. already. Happy Black Friday. All, All right. right. Get shopping <laughs> local and everywhere. <laughs>